One of the uh, top movies at the box office this summer is a ditty called um, Can't Buy Me Love. It's a romantic comedy. Amanda Peterson, our next guest on Live at Five, is one of the stars of this film, which follows the adventures of a, an awkward sort of nerdy high school senior who becomes the most popular guy on campus practically overnight uh, when a beautiful cheerleader agrees to become his constant companion for a price. Before we talk to Amanda, here's a clip from Can't Buy Me Love. Now, if I'm going to do this for one day, we have to do something about your style. I mean, it's like non-existent, okay? Take off that hat and rub that in. Okay, um, take off those glasses. Go. Let me take a look at you. Aye. Nope, turn around. Oh, shh. Okay. Ew. The sleeve. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Fine. Turn around and back up. Yes, yes. Big improvement. Yes. Okay, Donald. We're ready. Oh, Cindy, one last thing. Yeah. My name is Ronald, not Donald. <laughs> Welcome to Live at Five, Amanda. Thank there. You. Uh, as, as, as funny as this movie might be, there's a certain sadness to, uh, to somebody um, paying someone to say, you know, help me to be popular. Yeah, there is a sadness. I think that in the sense, you know, our movie really, you know, it, it initiates that at first, but it is also carried through the film that shows that, you know, it really came out to be something different. And, you know, it has its advantages. Just because I think Cindy was the type of person who probably wouldn't have gotten to know Ronald, mm. you know, without the money. Yes. But, you know, and that's unfortunate. But she did, and she got to know him, and she decided that's what she wanted to know. Well, obviously, the other thing is that um, popularity, or wanting to be popular, is something that, that everybody can relate to, whether you're a nerd or the beauty queen, mm -hmm. etc. Whether you're in high school or you're older as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely prominent, you know. Um, in life, you know, uh, but I also think that it's, it's it's prominent in high schools, which is really definitely unfortunate. I think that it's too bad that people have to, I mean, I tend to stay away from small groups or cliques just because I think it's really limiting as a person. Well, I, uh, looking at you, I would think you have a, you, you would have a, a double prong here in that, that your career uh, says you should be popular in order to, to work again. And also then you're still in school, so you have to deal with the real side of, the, of being popular. Right. Uh, I think that... Yeah. R-E-A-L. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's different. And, you know, I, I separate both of those lives also because I'm from Colorado, and um, so I have two different lives, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's true. You have to be popular in this business in order to, you know, get work. I mean, that's called being well known and um and but it's different you know when you separate that from life and work mm -hmm. work is different because you have to do it in, in essence and to get just a little bit more analytical and in the movies although you have to be popular to the movie goer we don't know whether it's necessary to be popular on the set to be successful right i think that well for me i have kind of a hard time you know uh, i'm I tend to be shy with getting to know people. I, I don't know. I, but I don't feel it's very important. Um, well, you, you should be, you know, nice and kind to people, of course. <laughs> but I don't feel that it's the most important thing mm -hmm. to be popular because um, when you feel good about your work, that's what people will look at you for. You know, the audience, the people that are watching, they won't say, oh, she was the funniest too, this guy, Fred. And, you know, yes. so it's different. I think that you should incorporate most of your efforts and most of your time into your work. What about when you're home in Greeley, Greeley, Colorado, Greeley, Colorado. is it? Um, the, the pressure of being popular, do you ever feel like you have an escape valve that, that all right, if, if things don't go smoothly, if I can't make them understand that I'm just a regular person, I'm going to go off and do such and such anyway? Um, I feel that I, well, I've always been kind of an individual, mm -hmm. you know, and so the, the kids, in a sense, can kind of take me for what I am. If they like it, good. If not, then, you know, that's okay, too, I guess. Um, but, no, I, I, like to do, I like to do as many things as I can with my friends at home. You know, it helps me keep things in perspective and touch base every once in a while. 
tell me about a year in the life. This was um, a, a TV series this year that started out last year as a, as a mini-series and uh, got great reviews for quality mm. and all that. The character you play, Sonny, gets to be real uh, in this movie and talk about real problems also. Right. She, uh, well, you know, she kind of epitomizes the teenage girls in America you gotta today. you got to deal with, with virginity. you got to right. deal with uh, right. uh, your mother's a single parent. Right. Well, it's, real, it's really important, I think, to deal with these subjects. And I think that the wonderful thing about our writers is that it is, you know, they deal with realism. And so, therefore, they're contacting the emotions and the feelings of the true person. So people watching will be able to relate. Yeah, she has to deal with problems of girls my age do you know there's a big question mark and you're wondering you know what's going to happen next what am i doing and and why is this happening as far as, you know as far as virginity and her sexual problems and also dealing with you know divorced parents and i think a lot of kids will be able to relate did um when you did the miniseries how much of a guarantee did you have that this was going to be a series and i mean were people's careers on hold well no they weren't really on hold i think that you know in this career you don't know what's going to happen the following mm -hmm. day. You have no idea. No matter what the guarantee is. Right. And, you know, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. And so I think you just have to keep moving in that sense. And I would have been satisfied with the miniseries as well because it was just, you know, it was a good piece of art. It's a quality situation. Amanda Peterson, we thank you for coming by. The name of the movie is Can't Buy Me Love. And you see her on TV in a year in the life. Thank, thank you for very coming much. by.